again, once again, welcome everyone. <laughs> I'm really glad to be you guys are here. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk about, about cross love, about God's way and ours. So, you go like somewhere and you meet the cross love and you choose which one, which way is going to go. Like so, my, today I'm going to talk about like some cross love. When you met the cross love, where are you going to go? Where are you going to choose? So, uh, if you, like we said, we saw all kind of uh, opportunity or some between choice. Choose, we, you, you have to choose something and like, you thought about was it was it good, was it bad, and also I'm gonna talk about the cross load about like uh, when you make the cho- choice between good or good or uh, not. I mean, good or bad. Maybe you could choose uh, follow your will because you're gonna you're gonna go for it because you like it and. Sometimes you made a bad choice because your will is so, uh, I mean, you're, you're like, you choose something bad because you, you really want it. But you know that was not good. That was sin. So if we saw all kinds of sins and like problems, and then we say, oh, that's terrible. How could you do that? You made a sin. Like, but... If you, people complaining, people do those things until our turn is coming our turn. Maybe somebody make the sin. You said, oh, how could you do that? But you made a sin. When it's your turn, you think differently. Like rationalize and subtle decisions entering. Like I never thought it's going to be my turn. I made a sin. But Sometimes you made a sin. And then people are going to complain and people, people are going to say to you, how could you do that? You made a sin. But it's come your, on my turn, it's going to be hard. Because I made, a, I made a, my, my will, my mistake. But that was my choice. So uh, I'm going to. I want to tell you about this one story to begin about a very elderly looking man. Okay. So every night uh, he would sit on his porch on his locking chair and he's do like locking and back and forth in his house. And he had a big smile always. So one lady, is, he, her name is uh, Amy, is working down the street. He, she saw him sitting on his porch, locking chair every night, had a, with a big smile. So, well, she want to know how, like, he do, made a big smile every night, every day, and with a locking chair. So, she want to know was the secret of this elderly man. So, one day... He, she just walked right up to the porch and said, eh, excuse me, I just have a question I would like you, would like ask you. And he said, okay, yeah, what's that? And she said, what's the secret why you always smile and look so happy? And what's the secret? And then she asked him. And he said, oh, that's easy. He said, I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. I drink like fish. I smoke weed. And I sin every chance I get. <laughs> so she said, you're just kidding me. <laughs> no, she said. Oh, he said, no, I do. That's why I make smile. I do. And, and she asked, she, she said, by the way, how old are you? And he said, 26. <laughs> That's the consequences. He was 26, but <laughs> he did so many bad things, and then he looks like all the elderly men. He made a choice. 
but he looks like like that. <laughs> when he uh, walked through the, all the like the, the situation, when he made some uh, mistake, when he when he may have to make some choice, sometimes we just go for it. Just what I like, then I do. But sometimes it it give you bad influence like him. So every one of us will make hundreds of decisions every week. But not all decisions you make will have the same weight attached it because some some decision is very simple, like like today. What should what shoes you're going to wear and what purse you're going to take to the church. It's like ladies, you guys do. And the men, what are you going to go here or there? You're going to go to this church or that golf club. They are like certain decisions. But sometimes we have to make the heavy ones. Like the, you, you made a decision that made it. Is something it gonna change your future, your destiny, or is 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 very is not a light. It's very heavy because you made a uh, decision like like buying house uh, and also uh, make a friend and and you're gonna go for the hangout with some uh, like uh, friends for ever. Like, if you choose to go hang out with somebody with forever, that means it's heavy. It's not the same weight. So, your opportune moments, if you choose good or bad, that makes you, like, sometimes uh, it makes you uh, happy or sad because you're. It depends on your decision. If you make the long decision, it set you back. If you make the light decision, it will make you who God created you to be. So opportune moments can make you or break you. It's very important. It can give you confidence or it can steal your confidence. Opportune moments and it's that moment uh, also, devil wait. Okay, he gonna make the mistake. He devils wait for it. He, what he gonna choose? What he gonna go for it? So today, I'm gonna we gonna find out about these two people who made opportune moments to succeed in. First one, the first is Jesus. When he was tempted by devil after having fast for forty days. And the devil tempts him, and he wins over him, over that, because he said, uh, "This is written." And the devil said, "Devil waits another oppor- opportune moment because Jesus win, because Jesus choose the right things." So let's start the, what Jesus done for us. Just as we talk about opportune moments, and then he was hungry. Let's see. The Luke chapter four, verse one two. Okay, uh, let's read it together. Okay, go. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led by a spirit in the wilderness. For 40 days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And they were ended. He was hungry. He was hungry. He was hungry. And now watch this. When the temptation comes, when you are hungry for something, you're hungry for attention. When you are hungry for romance, when you are hungry for prestige, and when you are hungry for the money, 
when you are hungry for power, it's an opportune moment to choose well. After 40 days, he became hungry and was next. Chapter 4, verse 3. Go. The devil said to him, If you are son of God, command this stone to be become bread. When he hungry, they will come and he attempt. He said, if you are son of God, command this stone to become bread. Now the devil is going to give him uh, three temptations. At this point, every single temptation come that Jesus Christ, he overcome because he know what he do, what he have to do. And he said, it is written. So he know what he have to do, what he know what was right by written the Bible. He has a, he had a word of God. So he said, it is written, the man not by the bread. Lastly, the, what happened and the this story, Luke chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. Yeah. Okay, would you read it with me? Okay, go. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Amen. When the devil had ended every temptation, he departs from the him until on opportune moments, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. So when he overcome the temptation, he got what? He got power of the Spirit. That's why he became more, more powerful influence in that area. Because he passed exam, he passed temptation, he chose the right thing. That's why he got power of the Spirit. Jesus is going to example that to us, that give him a power to overcome. Now we have to remember, you're going to have the great temptation in your life. When you're hungry, when you're hungry for lemons, hungry for power, hungry for money, hungry for prestige. When you're hungry for something you like, devil comes to you, give you a temptation. But after you overcome the temptation, you get the power of the Holy Spirit because you're the son of God. You guys are child of God. That's the, that's the why, that's the way Jesus done true. Jesus going, Jesus gave us a great example to overcome the temptations. You make you make your choice, and your eternity in your future attached to it, because you made a choice. Remember, an opportune moment. Devil waiting for it. Opportune moments can either make you. Or break you. So we have to choose well. It can give you hope or you can take it out your hope. Okay, let's go to our next guest that we want to visit with his name is Joseph. You know the Joseph. Um, you have heard about him in all the age. He was despised by his brothers, his family. His brothers sell him to slave trader because he was he was dreamer. He had so much, so much big visions. So the brothers hate him. So he they sell him to slave traders. So now Joseph goes down to Egypt. And then he put on the auction, slave auction, and the guy named Potiphar. Is kind of like government, governor of the small section, 
the whole city, and then he must be busy because uh, he has a wife named Mrs. Bodyball. <laughs> I don't know her name. And she's hungry. She's hungry for romance because the husband is so busy. So she see Joseph, a good-looking young man, and she kind of hooks him and say, come on into my bedroom. My husband's so busy. He always outside. Come on into my bedroom. Well, the, instead of running into the bedroom, Joseph, he takes up like bullet. He run away. He run. And so, but she's so persistent. Persistence. So she she run after him, and she grab him. He, his, uh, his, She grabs him, and he, she she lifts his coat, and he run up. So she has a like the piece of the fabric. She because she grab him, then in her hands she had a. Joseph's clothing. And she's so mad because he rejected her. And she frames up this mock story and he tried, like she tell, he tried to sexual assault to her. And then she told husband and Joseph that got in trouble. So husband get him thrown in the prisons. You know, but it won't be long because God gonna deliver him and put him on the throne of Egypt. Because the opportune moments, Joseph run away from the sin. That's why God gave him a throne of the Egypt. Because maybe. That opportune moment, like Joseph could have said, yeah, no, I'm in. I'm tired of being slave. I'm tired of my brothers. I'm tired working straight with God. It's time to, for me to party. So maybe he, he could choose to follow her bed in, in the bed. He, maybe he call his, her house. Come on, Mrs. Potiball. Yeah, maybe he could choose that. But he doesn't. He ran away from the sin. Maybe what if he did? He just followed her. And God going to give you him a throne of Egypt? No. If we choose follow her, so get into bedroom, He's not going to be a prime minister in Egypt. But he ran away from the sin. He got power of the Holy Spirit that make him a prime minister in the Egypt. God gave him a throne because he ran away from the sin. Opportune moments. Are incredibly important. Okay, I give you a practical example, like easy one, okay? Let's say you are on the strict diet. Everybody needs diet, me too. I'm diet, I'm, I'm on diet. You let it to go back to the house and you passing by Krispy Kreme donut store. Run! Run away! Well, I just want to look. It's like I just want to look. I want to see the perfect, perfect link. Maybe you just want to look, but if you look it, you won't be able to get out. Thirty minutes before you have eaten one dozen, and you got another dozen to go. <laughs> you can, you can 
you can't stop it because you already look it. You already look it. And you're, you just follow. You don't know automatically. And then you already get the wallet and you pay. It's not unconscious. Just how much? <laughs> you see, first thing, the devil wants just think about it. Just consider it. It's okay. But like, like this, you don't have to pay for this today. Just take a puppy home. Tell me, pay tomorrow. Like, all the devils, it just, like, it does, it's just not like donuts. You know what I mean? All temptation. You consider it, you just consider it well, and you follow automatically because you like it. When you cannot get away from these things, because you're unconscious, just follow what you like. Even the, all the minds tell you that's sin. That's not good, your body. Don't eat. But you consider it, you just open your eyes, you look at it, and you just follow. You, can, you think you can get away from these things, but you won't because you want to stay with them. You want day and after day because you like it. Now Joseph gave us the answer. He said, learn. Learn away from the sins. The Lord said to Peter and Simon in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32. Okay, let's read it together. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demands to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. This is going to be an opportune moment. And then God pray for you. Not your faith not fail you. So when you make, when you try to make Long decision, remember, God pray for you. God pray for you. And he said, your faith may not fail. Once you have turned and understand the power of the Holy Spirit, it strengths, it gives you, it give you strength. It gives you, you make your brother like legacies. So, if you get experience about the power of the Holy Spirit, you rejected the sin, you followed God's word, you got something in your mind, it's the power of the Holy Spirit, and that it makes your legacy. You follow Jesus Christ. You follow not to make the sin. You rejected it, and you got great drawn of God. You got, you got it? If you follow God's word, you reject the sin. You guys became a great nation by God's power. So this opportune moment is very important. But every time when you made a choice, then something tells you, say, go for it. Go get it. But you have to remember Second step, the subtle deceptions. First, just table said, consider it. Just think about it. But when you made a choice, you have to avoid the easy way. Pastor Jimmy, what if I already uh, kind of mess up? Here's some good news. Do you guys are ready to hear that? Good news? It's never too late because of Jesus to lead him your birthright. It's never too late, you see, because Jesus died on the cross. He gave us second chance. Never late. How many of you are all glad the cross, 
the cross, he gave us second chance. Amen? He died on the cross. He gave us second chance. We already made a mistake. We made a long decision. But we have another chance because God just gave us second chance. So what do we do here? You made a choice. And then you, if you made a long choice, repent and return opened. Repent and return opened. So if you are if you're somebody I mess up five times, you repent, God give you five times forgiveness. Well, I mess up so many times. God not going to forgive me. No, he will. Don't believe the lie that he won't give you forgiveness. He always give you forgiveness when you return, repent to God. How many times will, will he forgive you? Seventy times seven. That means forever. If you come, if you repent, if you come to God, God going to give you forgiveness. In other words, God's going to forgive you again and again to keep your heart sensitive to his ways. So just come. If you made a mistake, if you made a long decision, just come and repent to God. That's, we, that's why that's we got new life. That's why I think that's why our church name, New Life Church. Come to repent. Somebody said uh, I made a like, huge mistake in my life. But that's okay. You had a second chance because that's why Jesus died for us. I said uh, mm, Maybe somebody somebody said it. Mm, everybody doing it. That's not look like sin. You know, uh, is the is the way we live. That is not sin. You know, it's all it's not a evil. Um, it's our society. Now everybody doing same things. Why you said it's sin? Like. In fact, they passed the law. That is the cool now. So now, all sin switched sin to the cool. Like because it's past the law. Let me tell you the worst evil things. The greatest evil of all is when evil is no longer evils. That's why it's uh, important to repent often. Repent. Why? Because it keeps your hearts in tune. Right, make your light. What's right and what's wrong determined by what is written and what is in, in your mind. If you you have a pure heart, you're not gonna make wrong decision because the power of the Holy Spirit lead you, teach you, and escape from the sin. But if, you, if your mind has no Holy Spirit, you don't have any power of Spirit, you're going to make the long decisions. So Bible said, the first John chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That means we just come to God and we confess and then he give you great forgiveness. If we confess, if we confess to God. What if I say it's not sin? Is there forgiveness? Is there forgiveness for it? No. Like the story, if I killed somebody. God gonna forgive you? Yes. You know, Moses, 
Moses. Remember Moses. He murdered. And our apostle Paul, also he, he killed the people. But when come to God, had forgive them. Forgive our, like that a great grace of our forgiveness. If you confess your sin, and you can get a second chance, and you can get a new life. There are some unforgivable sin. You, you guys hear, hear that? There are unforgivable sin. Like you said, you just said that all sins are forgiven. Yes, I listen carefully. All sins are forgiven, but one sin, there are one unforgivable sin. The sin you refuse to allow God to forgive. Because you don't ask him. That's unforgivable sin. Because you know, you know that is the sin, but you said you think that is not sin. You because that's, uh, that's why you didn't confess. You still carry your sin in your body, in your soul, in your heart. You, if you not confess, that's not forgivable. That means you still carry your sin. I don't think it's sin, so I don't need your forgiveness. That means you carry your sin in your body. That's an unforgivable sin. Because I don't think it's sin, now listen very carefully. Don't ever let people or society tell you what is sin or not sin. You let it is written tell you that's right. What's, what, what's good or bad. The light, I mean, don't let the government tell you what's sin or not sin. You let God tell you what's sin. Don't let so, so, social media tell you what's sin. In, the, in other words, don't let celebrity tell you what's sin and what is not sin. You let God's word because grass wither, the flowers fade, but the word of God abides forever and forever. But you could say, it, you said it, it's, it wasn't illegal, who cares? So you're going to do wheat? You're going to do all the bad things in your life? That's not illegal? That what? No. God cares. Don't let the state law tell you what's sin or not sin. You're not going to stand before the state law one day. One day, you're going to stand before the King of kings and the Lord of Lord, our Almighty God. I'm going to close these sermons. I'm come back to what Jesus did in his opportune moments. And he said, it is written. You guys, you guys have Bible in your hands? It is written. That's why I said, this is my Bible, the word of God. And I boldly declare that is the highest law in the land. You have to follow what is written. Not the state law. Not the social media said, not the everybody said. No, you have to follow what is written by God. I'm what is say I am. I have what is say I have. What I do, what is say I do by God. I am because we are citizens of heaven. Can you say amen to that? Okay, let's pray.